Okay, let's talk about the Praxis exam. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the Elementary Education Content Knowledge Exam and the code, test code, is 5018. So if you're watching this video, assume that you're going to be taking this exam or you're very bored and just browsing around, but that's okay <laughs> as well. So um, again, uh, I'm sure you are interested in the Praxis exams. There are many different types of Praxis exams. That's why we have these test codes. So um, uh, if you didn't know this, which I'm sure you already do, these are exams that are basically teacher certification exams in several states, not all states. There's a lot of states that use their own exams, um, but the Praxis is a very, um, it's an excellent uh, exam uh, type and it's it's challenging. How do I know? Because I myself am a middle and high school math teacher and I also taught uh, college. So, um, you know, you got to respect these exams as you should because these are professional exams. Your profession is a teacher, okay, and it requires a college degree, certification, etc. So none of these things are going to happen without putting in some serious uh, effort. And I think a lot of people get thrown when they see the word elementary. You know, everybody may think, oh, it's basic and this and that, but I'm sure if you have elementary uh, teacher um, experience, um, that's, you know, being a teacher at any level is challenging, okay? And unfortunately, too many people in our society just have no clue what it takes to be an excellent teacher. So we need great teachers. I want to help you uh, get there. So um, what I want to do is I'm going to go over this practice problem. It'd be a, a nice basic problem. I'll explain it here in a second. If you need help with the math section of this uh, particular exam, I, I have a specific Praxis Elementary Education Content Knowledge exam test prep course. I'll leave the link in the description. Very comprehensive. So if you um, you think that you like learning from me, you can definitely um, uh, go through my course and be very prepared for this exam. With that being said, let's get to the problem. Okay, so what I'd like you to do here is we have a group of numbers, a set of numbers, okay, and I'd like you to just find the measures of central tendency. The measures of central tendency. What does that mean? It means the mean, median, and mode and range okay so this is basic um, statistics okay but we call these here the basic foundations of the measures of central tendency okay so this is real quick I'm gonna get into this problem here but let's say we have a bell curve oh, that's a poor bell curve let me draw one a little bit better so here we have a classic bell curve and I'm sure you recall back in your college days or your high school days you're like oh boy I wish the teacher would grade on a curve I'm sure a lot of teachers uh, do that out there but basically right we want to know uh, the bell curve here right it will be like okay most people let's say this is C and this is where B grades are at and then here we have a few getting A's down here we have a few getting F's and D's right so the majority of the people in a classic distribution or normal distribution. I don't want to get too far off the handle here in this particular video, but the majority of people are in the, the center, right? Okay. So we want to find the kind of like center measurements, right? This is this measures of central tendency. You know, just think about it. It's kind of self-explanatory. Where is the tendency? So we use, you know, words like mean or median, the average, but you really need to know um, the technical differences because a lot of people throw these terms around and they don't really know what they're talking about especially the biggest thing I see is between the median and the mean okay so um, from an elementary standpoint math standpoint you definitely want to know this so anyways I made my case for learning this but go ahead and calculate this if you can real quick of course I'm gonna go through it all right, so let's start with the mean. Now the mean is nothing more than the average. So how do we find an average? We simply add all these guys up and we divide by what? One, two, three, four, five. So let's go ahead and do that now. So this would be uh, three plus negative one plus five plus zero plus two divided by one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so let's see here. 
3 plus negative 1, that gives me a 2. 2 and 5 gives me 7. And then 7 and 2 gives me 9, right? Okay, so this is going to be 9 divided by 5. Let me double check my work. And I do this differently. This gives me, gives, gives me 8. This gives me 1. Okay, it is 9. Listen, if there's one thing that I have learned through multiple years of teaching and grading, and I'm talking several, several years, and I have a degree in math and a master's degree, is you are capable of making mistakes even with basic little numbers, especially with basic little numbers, because your mind goes on automatic. You're like, oh yeah, I know this, da 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 da, and you kind of like go into autopilot, but really you, your mind is sleepwalking and you will make errors. So always double check your work when it comes to math or probably anything else. Okay, so nine fifths would be our mean. Now we can get a decimal from that. Uh, no need to turn this into a mixed number, but if you got nine over five, and eh, if you have a decimal, that's great, okay? No, but it's not required, at least in, in this video. Okay, now let's talk about the median. Now, how do we find the median? Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to order this from lowest to highest value. So what's the lowest value here? Well, hopefully you uh, chose negative one. So negative one is the least number. It's lower than zero. Okay, so zero is our next number. So we got negative one, zero, then obviously two, and then we got three. Then lastly, we got five. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five numbers in a data set. Now we can uh, find the median. The median is the middle value. In this case, it's exactly two because there are um, an equal amount of values to the left of two and to the right of two. So the median, like middle, is the middle value okay so here the median is two now let me just grab my handy dandy calculator here let me go ahead and just take nine divided by five it's 1.8 okay so 1.8 is our average or our mean and now we have our median is that it's which is two so we have this data set and now we're developing these measures of central tendency we're seeing the tendency for this data, the central tendency is around 2, 1.8, etc. Okay, so this is the whole idea. Now, if there was another number in this data set, let's say like 7, how would we find, this is real quick, take a look at this, how would we find the median? Okay, there is no middle number. 2 is not the middle number, and neither is 3 because we, we either end up with 3 numbers on one side or 2 on the other or vice versa. In this case, you have to average the two middle numbers. So the average of 2 and 3, this is going to be what? 2.5. Okay. So that's how you find the median when you have a situation where you have the 2 in the middle. Okay. And that happens with what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. When you have an even set of numbers in your data set, you're going to have to average to get the median. Now, what is the mode? Well, in this case, there is no mode, so there's no mode, but I didn't answer my own question. What is the mode? Well, it is a number in the data set that occurs the most. So, for example, let's kind of erase this. If I had like a 3 over here, I have a 3 showing up twice. So this 3 repeats the most. Okay. So the number that has the highest frequency where the value that has the highest frequency in your data set is the mode. In this case, there is no mode, okay? All right, so let's go back to our range. Okay, let me just make sure I have all the right numbers here. So I do, don't wanna make any mistakes. So our range is what? Well, again, we need the ordering from lowest to highest, and the range is gonna be the distance or uh, yeah, the distance displacement from the highest to the lowest, okay? So this is going to be, what is the range? Go ahead and answer that question now if you haven't already done that. Hopefully you didn't say four, because that would be incorrect. It's five minus a minus one, that's the distance. So this is gonna be five minus a minus one is five plus one, it's six. So the range is six, okay, now why is that? Well, it's the distance between five and negative one on the real number line. So let's take a look at a real number line. I can draw that better than that. Let's do it right here. Okay, so here is zero and here is five and here is negative one. 
So what's the distance? Well, I got to go five here, right? And then I got to go another one more unit right here. Remember, distance um, is in positive units. That's why this is six. So five and one is a six total uh, units away. So that is our range. So all these here are the basic me uh, measures of central tendency. Something you absolutely uh, want to know. Very basic uh, type of stuff, but again, you know, the basic stuff is often the things that people confuse uh, the most. And this is just a sample of the type of math that you're going to need to know. You're, you're definitely going to have to, uh, you know, if you have a math phobia, if you hate math, or you've been away from it for a long time, do yourself uh, the favor and really do a good review for the practice. Because you don't, the worst thing you can do is be like, oh, I know everything else but the math section. Then you're going in, you're, you're taking... Uh, you're handling the math questions and you, and you fail the exam by one point. That happens all the time. If you take a look at some of the passing rates on some of these exams, I believe for the Praxis exam that I took for the high school level, which, you know, I like had calculus and stuff, I, I believe it was like the first time out, it's like a 50% passing rate. So you absolutely can pass these ex uh, or fail these exams. So don't do that, okay? Don't go in and wait more time. Um, and spend more money, etc. Study hard and you know get it done the first time. All right. So if you um, like the way I teach, I would certainly uh, encourage you to subscribe to my channel. I'm posting videos literally like all the time. I have hundreds of videos on my channel right now that could benefit you for this particular Praxis exam. Also, I'm going to leave the link uh, to my actual Praxis uh, test prep course for this exam in the description of this video, so you can check that out. Um, if you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Let me know how your exam efforts are going. Um, did you take the exam or, you know, more than a few times? Are you struggling in a particular area? You know, your feedback is what helps me get better so I can make more videos like this. But with that being said, I want to applaud you for choosing education as a career. It's challenging. However, there's a tremendous amount of rewards and you got to work at it okay you definitely have to work not only just to get your education and your certifications but to build the skill of teaching okay but we need great teachers out there so I wish you all the best thank you for your time and have a great day